All right, we're here with Mark from Moz Customs, and today we are going to be looking at how to repair fin damage when you hit the reef or whatever it is that you happen to damage your fin with. So take it away, Mark. Well, Paul, both of us have been lucky enough to have not hit the reef recently, so we need to fake one up. We've got a nice broken fin here that's pretty old. We'll try, and, try and duplicate a bit of reef damage, if we can. Um, a bit more significant then. We'll take a bit of a chunk out of it and we'll give it, give it a couple of chunks because we're going to show you probably the, the slightly more proper way to do a small one or the proper product rather and then we'll show you a way that you can do it with the uh, the UV resin. Maybe we'll make the big one um, the one that we do with the more proper product then. What do you reckon? Yeah. So, going around to the workbench, because it's uh, my board that we don't worry about too much. Um, best product to use, now not necessarily the brand, but a metal filled, see, steel reinforced. It's a very high strength epoxy that's got metal in it. Um, JB Weld, uh, Loctite make one, Permatex make one. There's a, there's a number of different brands. Um, there's another one, I can't think of it at the moment. Now, I don't like the quick setting stuff. Quick setting stuff invariably, um, obviously puts you under a bit of pressure to work it in, in the right time frame. Um, but also I find it's not as strong. So ordinarily, I would be using the 24 hour one and particularly in our WA summer. Um, the, other, the other way, if we were doing it on holidays, is obviously we can use our solar resins. Um, I put it away after last time. On holidays, the things that you're going to use to fix your board for a temporary repair, solar resin, um, even better with a bit of fibre in it. Um, I use quite a bit of the stuff, so I've got a bulk pack there. You probably don't want to buy that at a hundred bucks. So, um, so firstly. Definitely the strongest and best result, that one. Um, what you might use on holidays, that one. But I'm gonna use this because it's already open. I don't wanna open a brand new packet. So the more serious repair we'll do with the, the bigger one. Now I'm presuming that if you're away on holidays, you might not have access to some sticky tape or something. So we'll do the proper repair with a bit of tape on it. Uh, and then this one here, we might, we might try our chances with uh, having it unsupported. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is obviously put something on there so it doesn't all dribble away from us and disappear. But um, when I actually fill it, I'm gonna to have to pull that away just a little bit because we, we do wanna get, I hope you can get close enough. We do wanna get epoxy. We do wanna get the epoxy around this side here. So when we tape it, you find that it's pushed down into the hole a bit. Um, and if I fill that now, the other side um, will have a slight dent in it. I do need to pull the tape away just a little bit for when we first put the epoxy on. And that's just to avoid a, a two-step fill. So I'll mix some of this up and come back. So two-part stuff um, in small quantities can be a bit difficult because you're doing it visually. You try and be really close to get the same amount. Um, I would say there is a tiny bit more of the white there, perhaps. Probably safer to mix up a larger quantity so we can see that we've got the, the quantities correct. But for the sake of a fake repair, I'm not going to use half a tube. Um, big tip with mixing things like this too, wipe it all off your stick because what you've done here is mix and what's actually underneath that on the stick the first time you mix is a bit of just one part and when you do that you just make sure that you're moving it around plenty but we haven't got long with this one. 
it's a bit fast. So pulling the tape away and all I'm trying to do is get enough on the far side, on the bottom side, to push the tape up really gently and trying not to push the tape into the hole. Um, like I said, lest we end up with having to fill the other side as well. But if we do, no biggie. And then leaving it proud on the top and the front, making both surfaces, making both surfaces filled up nice. As I said, we've got six minutes on that one. So what we might try and do now is while that's, normally I'd put that on the bench, and let it sit nicely. But while that's going off, we might try and do this, this one here with no tape. Um, so we're gonna need something to put under it to support the epoxy. Um, so I'll probably run with the plastic lunch bag that... All right, so now going to the one that we're gonna do in the bush, we've got nothing, all we've got is our solar epoxy type stuff that we might use for a board repair. Again, I'm not gonna open that. I'll use my bulk pack here. And this might all be in the timing. This could be a little bit difficult because what we're gonna try and do is not spill that everywhere. And because we're in the bush, we don't have sticky tape. So I'll try and support it with a bit of plastic because the epoxy won't stick to the plastic. Any old way we can stop that from running away. And then I'm trying to keep it high. I'm dragging it up so it won't disappear. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. And at the same time, we're gonna run it out into the sun. And I'm still working it with the pop stick so it's not gonna disappear on me. Still pulling it up, still pulling it up so we end up yep. with a decent lump. realised I was creating too much shadow with the stick there. There we go, now it's going off. And getting a hot finger. It's definitely going off. Cool, that's that's set enough that it's gelled. So bearing in mind we still want to wait our few minutes for that one. I reckon we'll stick it in the sun so that goes off properly and it'll give that a bit of a head start as well. All right, we'll come back from leaving this in the sun for a bit so we can see the, uh, the UV resin's definitely gone off quite nicely. Um, that being a fairly fast epoxy's gone off okay. Now, worth mentioning too, though, that if you have a plastic fin like K4, um, these sort of products don't stick to thermoplastics. Um, we've checked the K4 website and they recommend for minor nicks or scratches, like you can see here, to rub it out with 240 or 400 grade wet and dry, which we're gonna do on this shortly anyway, so same process. Or if there's bigger chunks, um, you can smooth them out by trimming with a knife. Uh, there are products that would adhere to a thermoplastic, but they're quite expensive and I've never done it, so I'm not going to recommend them. But some of the plastic car bumper fillers might work, but we can't guarantee that. So we run with what's on the K4 website. So. For now, we'll just peel the tape off, which was supporting that bottom edge. And yet we've done all right. There's a slight hump there. The last thing we wanted was an underfill because then we'd have to fill the other side. Of course, not a, not a, not a, um, a problem if you did have to come back and fill that. So now we're going to rough out the shape with 180, bit smoother with um, 240, and then come into the four, and then come into the 400. Um, again, sanding block. Um, you never get anything right without a sanding block. Yeah. So I tend, I like cork, but you can cut something out of a bit of wood. Um, the reason for the block, particularly, it's going to work a lot more, a lot nicer for getting that that curve back. When doing a fin, I always get that outline right first before I start hacking into the foil. Um, because if you start shaping that foil, really there's no point because you don't know what uh, what you're sanding to. You need to get the perimeter, the perimeter right first, if that makes sense.
probably a bit hard to see what I'm doing, but the uh, the UV resin was filled a lot higher, so this one's almost done, um, almost level enough. Just got to work a bit, work a bit longer on where that UV resin was. So now I'm just putting, uh, getting that leading edge bevel right. Remembering that a fin is not a flat angle there and a flat angle there. It's got a bit of curve to it, but we're really only sanding just here. Trying not to take any of the draft off by over sanding over there. There's our fill with the steel reinforced epoxy. Um, I keep rubbing more dirt on it. Um, we've got the rough shape back with 180. Now it's getting hard to see that. Nick, it was a bit small just there, I think. Is that yep, right? Yep. On the other side. The other side was a bit more significant size. Yeah, nice. And the steel one there. Now, you could go and sail that because we're not speed sailing. We're talking about a wave fin here that you hit reef with or something. However, yeah, in the desert, we could leave it like that, but let's do it a little bit more properly. Going to 240, taking out, we would have put some fairly significant scratches in with a 180, so. And anytime you're working on a leading edge, it's worth checking, it's not sharp, it's not a knife. This here is actually ever so slightly rounded. So at this point is where I normally get my 240 and just give it a little bit of a touch like that. And this is particularly true on a trailing edge. If you're ever working here, you'll, you'll guaranteed sand it out so fine it ends up like a knife and it doesn't need to be. So um, just a touch and that is now ever so slightly rounded. Um, and now into the final with the, t with the 400. Again, it's getting smoother and smoother and in the desert there's no way we would have gone this far, but we'll make it proper. And I reckon those two are pretty much done. We'll make it look pretty and glossy for a little bit for the camera. Yeah. Looks really good. G10 is wonderful to work on. Um, G10 fins, the ones that look like a bit of a greeny or bluish fiberglass. Like um, this. Yep. G10 is really, really dense. So sanding back with the 400 and stuff, you get a really, really good finish. G10 is so much more repairable than the moulded fins. What I tend to do with G10 is after sanding it, um, or if you want to do a quick job rather, sand it down to 240. If you haven't got a fine spray, uh, if you haven't got a fine uh, wet and dry paper, just paint it with clear, um, with a clear spray can, and that will fill all the scratches and make it look a lot nicer. You can you can do a lot of good work on those fine scratches just by painting it. But like I said, it's got to be a quality spray can that's not leaving big dots of paint all over the place. Which actually, if you don't mind me butting in, but just uh, on on that, different fin materials, we've got G10, carbon, yep. and then... Well, this is easy to see. Uh, this is what the, the RTM fins, I can't remember what the acronym is now, the um, resin something moulded, I can't remember. Anyway, so you can see that that's layers of fibreglass that's, um, that's been impregnated with resin and moulded. Mm -hmm. um, Nothing wrong with them. Certainly not. Certainly not um, saying there's anything wrong with these fins. But G10 is a stronger product. Um, G10 is many, many layers of fiberglass moulded under great pressure, and then shaped. So I'll show you a sheet of G10. There's a sheet of G10, and I don't know what that is. That's like many, many layers of fiberglass with a really strong resin, and then the fin is machined from that. So it's a lot stronger. But you are right that it can be a bit stiffer, and you know the feel of that fin is going to be considerably different to a pure G10 fin. 
But as far as repairs go on G10, mm. say, say you had G10 or carbon fins and you got a nick yep. in the reef or something. Exact, what about... exact same process. Okay. Um, it's worth mentioning too, though, that unfortunately sometimes with with these type fins and also with carbon fins, um, because these and carbon are quite often laminated like that and molded, when you hit something, they often split laterally mm. and you often have a separation at the tip. Um, that becomes problematic because that separation invariably fills up with sand and it makes it really hard to squash it all back together again. So what I normally do with those is um, stick it in the vise, mm -hmm. give it a really good squeeze and you can hear all that uh, sand breaking. Then you can open it up a bit again and blow it out with air, use a pin, anything you can do to get that um, sand out of there so that you can push it back together then you can use the products um, that we've just used, the metal filled epoxy, to glue it all back together and clamp it. Once you've done that, you can start working on your leading edge. But when they split through the top here and separate like that, it can be really problematic. But it's certainly worth trying um, with any sort of glue, uh, well, any sort of quality epoxy adhesive, uh, or a metal filled epoxy like we just used, to squish it back together and then do this work on the leading edge that we just did. Mm -hmm. Nice. Actually, I will, I will say one thing about that. It's good that you mentioned that because I did go on a windsurf trip once and I was hitting the reef constantly. Didn't have backup fins and the, and the fin actually was starting to split. Mm. And I just did the most dodgy repair, but basically got that uh, the quick setting, uh, our, you know, the surfboard repair stuff yep. and literally just sort of filled it all up and just sand it all back. I mean, it did. It, it lasted another week or two, which was the length of time I was on the holiday. So it actually ended up doing the job. But um, yeah. yeah, I experienced that firsthand with the, the, the fin splitting apart. Well, it's worth yeah. mentioning too, using that UV resin, if you're trying to use that to glue these layers together, if that's split and you're trying to glue it together with UV, it, might, it won't go off unless you can get the light in there. Mm. So you can't fill it up with UV, clamp it and hope that something's going to happen, it won't. So, you know, it needs to be stood upright in the sun. You need to be getting the sun down into that split to make sure it all fully sets. Awesome. Well, that's it. Thanks for the uh, all the tips.